we know when all these sort of technical studies and all that is put together and we can, is it going to be two months, three months? What what you know, what is it? As I'm aware, Tony, as the cabinet member, I've been given an assurance that the first part of, the, of, of this coming back the other way should be fixed, completed by the end of February. Now we're waiting to see. I, 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 I'm, I'm, please ask the officers as well, because you make the point of someone made the point just before about the, 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 the five new people coming into planning farms. Yeah, they're in. Uh, and so therefore we've now got a, a, a planning department which is now up to strength where it should be. And so therefore, yes, there should not be now a hold up in any way, shape or form. Okay, thank you. Councillor Gray. Hi, thank you. Um, apologies if I should have known this, I'm, I'm just deputy. Um, I've got a question about the um, state of community involvement. It's just about as members, you've reassured us that as members we all get to have more say in this. Uh, and we're mindful of our residents, obviously. So will the residents get to have another consultation on the final draft? On the final, on, on the final draft, um, I, yeah, well, obviously, because I think, yeah, yeah, because I, th I think what will happen at the end of the day, you know, what, 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 what could, what, what, let, let's toss all the balls in the air and I'll let them come down, you know, if, and it was mentioned before about Peel, if Peel come up with a figure that gives us the numbers, <coughs> but we're not going to be anywhere near the green dots. That's my ambition. That's where I'm starting from. So the whole top and bottom of this becomes working with all the people outside. So once this consultation is completed now and we come back, that's when we sit down and we talk to people and we say, this, this, this and this can happen. And hopefully all that will be able to be acceptable onto the down field. Just, just back on page 10 and 11 of the uh, statement of community involvement, just that it says it's a minimum, it says a minimum six week period of public consultation on proposed submission draft local plan. Uh, and it talks about being in the later stages. So it would definitely, when sort of the walls have come down and we've got an actual plan, because at the moment we've just got a list of possible fields. This the, 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 the timeline, and I, I've got to come to you with that, but, but the timeline as I, as I understand it is we, we should be completed at this level by July of this year. And it should be then down to, to government to, to get it checked out and then new year to, to develop it. That's what it takes. So it's all sort of about 20 to be completed. 20 to 20 Yeah, 20 to 20 so it comes, it comes back to the buzz as elected members. Absolutely. And then before that, <coughs> or after that, it, goes, it does go to the public again as an actual plan, not just a list of fields. That's right. right. Brilliant. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Councillor Gray. Final question on this section because some of these questions are actually starting to roll over or verge into the types of questions that officers should be answering, yeah. not necessarily the cabinet member. So I'll take one final question in this section from Councillor Musgrat. And then we'll have the question, we'll have the, the statements from the officers if they have any, and questions for the officers. So final question in this section. Councillor Mills Pratt. Thank you, Chair. Um, George, you say your ambition is that uh, the buildings on the Pilgrim is done, and that's absolutely fantastic that we're now in the middle of February and the plan has to be in by July. So I ain't holding my breath on that one. Okay. Um, I, you've made reference to the fact that you wanted joint working, but it didn't happen. I thought that the councillors were in charge of what happened, and I'd be wrong. Um, you, you tell us about being told. Um, unfortunately, there's an awful lot of rumour and alternative tales going around. I think you've been copying to some emails recently from uh, a group within my own ward of okay. concern. Yes, so, I want to know the green belt that we're talking about. Who decides? Is it the whole of the council who decides on the green belt that's owned by the local council? Whether it be taken out of green belt protection or not. Is it the whole of us? Right, and you tell us that we will have something to vote on. But we will be voting on what somebody else has put before us, 
we would have no input into it. And I think that's the frustration that's felt by a number of us. And you also you told us, you tell us that the information is always there. Can I just say to you, employment land, and I think you know what I'm talking about. The information has not been there, George. And that's not because the officers haven't given it to us. Because I can vouch for every single question I've asked poor David Ball. He has come back with the answers and the information. I can't say that that's true about the two who left, because they gave me spurious information, both of them. But David has certainly done everything that we could have expected him to do, but that has not been across the board. I think, I think I'm going to that. Sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you for seeing it. Well, I want an answer, please. What, what do you want the answer for? I want the answer on the green belt. Who makes the decision? We will we'll make the decisions. Who is we, please? We, we, 66 councils. Make the decision. We I'm will make the decision. Sorry, can we have this absolutely clear? All 66 councillors make the decision on which council... Recommendation. Recommendation. Oh, no, can I just... Can, can I just... Sorry, no, can I just... Highlighted 
forms a key part of the overall local plan as I've stated, which you will all vote on in full council, as we've heard from the debate previously. The local plan will be owned by members. There is not a single aspect of it which will not be seen by members, and I will take away the comments already made <coughs> about the visibility of this and ensure that you do get to see everything that you need to see. The reason for the delegation as Council Davis has explained is to accelerate the local plan, plan process given the real and imminent threat of government intervention. And I am talking weekly with the uh, Planning Advisory Service and MCHLG uh, MC uh, to ensure that we are on track with the local plan now. The decision making on the content and final version of the local plan remains as it does now with elected members. The December Cabinet Report contained the general statement and the financial implications because at that time the detailed cost of these studies that I refer to were not known. The cost of studies, when known, will be reported to members through the regular financial reports of the Council and will be included in future update reports on the local plan that we will provide to this committee. Again, I want to ensure that there is full transparency and oversight at every stage of the local plan process going forward. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Paul. David, do you have a statement that you wish to make on the purely to take, uh, take questions? Purely to take questions, Chair, yeah, nothing to like them. Okay, thank you. We'll start the question process then. Start with Councillor Hudson. Thank you. Um, <coughs> perhaps you could help on this, because I was left a little bit confused at the end of the last question time with uh, Councillor George Davis. At one point he said all 66 councillors will make the decision yeah. on which green dollar land will be sold. And then later on in his, in his comments he said it could be left down to the officers. Could you clarify the situation, please? Thank um, you, Chair. In terms of land designations in Wirral, uh, there's land that's designated as green belt. Some of that in the council ownership, some of that is in private ownership. Now, the process that has to take place for the release of any green belt land is through the statutory local planning process. So what will happen here, this is the process that we're in now, is we put the plan together. That plan is um, considered by a full council and you vote on that. It then goes through a public examination process, which is chaired by a planning inspector. And at the end of that closed process, the plan comes back to this council for formal adoption. Now it's at the formal adoption process stage that if there are any amendments to the current green belt boundary that is drawn in Wirral, they take effect from that date. So that's the green belt side of it. Now if the council owns land which is in the green belt at the present time, the council as a landowner makes the decision with regards to what it wants to do with that piece of land. And if it's within the Green Belt, then anything it wishes to do will obviously have to meet the Green Belt policies that the council set out in the statutory local plan. And obviously if it's outside the Green Belt, then there's the other planning policies that work. So the decision actually on the land that you own as a council is down to you. Does that answer the question, Councillor? Yes. Thank you. Okay, Captain. Sorry, Councillor Davis. Uh, thank you, Chair. It's in relation to the comment about the technical studies that will be needed to take place. Given uh, the framework policies, national EPF policies 170, 171, 174, 177, in relation to sustainable development and policy 7 to 11. Uh, as stated before, most of these are technical, and the reason they are technical is because they'll be sites of scientific interest, they'll be sites of agricultural land, and it's getting those technical studies to make sure that we have the right piece in place to show it's a central government 
the reason argument why it will not be developed up in relation to that. And I'd also thought in, in, in line with uh, National Planning Policy uh, 170, which is in relation to agricultural land. And given that the, the majority of the, the policy, the green belt on the will, is kind of covered by agricultural grade A land or triple size and sites of scientific interest. How does that leave you the group for the new bill? Okay, so we, we have to under the under the local plan register to undertake those technical studies. So we need to wait for those technical studies to come back to us and then we'll make that assessment. So of course it's day to day in terms of what we do that. We have to do those technical assessments. It's part of the local plan register. Mm -hmm. If I may come back to yes, you. Yeah, answer, yeah. yeah all, all those policies I put forward there are government policies and they're in line with what we do as, as a local authority. So I find it very difficult. Uh, it doesn't give officers much wriggle room really to move around outside of what we already agree. The argument will be between what the officer's recommendation comes up with and what government policies <coughs> Okay, thanks for that. Councillor Sides.